very warm welcome by my side at behest of Technia Institute of Advanced Studies to our distinguished guests present over here. We have Dr. Ranbir Singh, IAS, who is currently serving as Chief Electoral Officer, Ms. R. Menika, IAS, District Magistrate, North District, and Sri JL Gupta Ji, ITS Nodal Officer. Accompanying them is our Director Sir, Dr. Ajay Kumar, and Dr. Dean Sir, Dr. M. N. Jha. Sir and ma'am, we are grateful. We are really grateful to all of you for accepting our invitation and being a part of this insightful event. Could I please request all of you to come up on the stage and have your uh, seats? I again extend my heartfelt thanks to all of you for sparing your invaluable time. It indeed is an honor to have such magnificent intellectuals to aware us on the topic, youths role in electoral process under the systematic voters education and electoral participation sweep program. Could I please request our honorable dignitaries to come up for the lightning of the lamp. Now, could I please request our Director Sir, Dr. Ajay Kumar, to felicitate our Chief Guest, Dr. Ranbir Singh, IS Chief Electoral Officer, Delhi. Sir I would request our Dean Sir, Dr. M. N. Jha, a thorough academician and a brilliant with brilliant communication skills to please come up on the stage for the welcome address. Honorable Chief Guest, Guest of Honor, Director Tyus, my colleagues and dear students as main beneficiaries available over here, a very good morning. Activities under systematic voters education and electoral participation sweep program are undertaken to educate the electoral regarding procedures relating to registration of name in electoral roll, correction of their existing particulars in electoral roll, and deletion of name if required uh, by shifted family members. We uh, sweep activities are also meant to inform about various online, offline uh, facilities available to voters regarding ethical voting like how to vo cast votes, how to help the election machinery to prevent corrupt practices during election, etc. Our country is having maximum youth voters and maximum first-time voter voters as well. In spite of the fact that all eligible youth of 18 and 18 plus are not joining this prestigious club, voters club on time because of many reasons. And even if they join, they, a major percentage are not voting because of migration, because of non-awareness, because of non-awareness of getting the address and voter ID corrected at a time of shifting and all. Some because of not having any awareness towards their obligation and right for their society and country. Voters of age 18 to 21, the college days, you are mostly, most of you are enjoying your first time voters right during your college days. So it is very, very important to address you, to make you aware, pros and quan, to make you aware your obligation, to make you aware your right. India, as the youngest country so far, the voter is concerned, so your role is very, very important. And keeping this objective in which is what the first objective, first and foremost objective, when the Constitution was amended, 61st Amendment of Constitution of the Article 326, the main objective of, of that amendment was uh, to encourage youth involvement in the country's electoral process. Though a lot of many things we can say, but we have expert, we have authority over here who can guide you. You might have a lot many queries in your, in your mind. And one of the most important, if you don't have queries, it means you are not aware of your right and your obligation too. 
So you need to aware, you need to activate yourself, you need to participate in the uh, voting process either of the local bodies or the state or the parliament. So without wasting, wasting time, I once again welcome all the dignitaries and request them to kindly enlighten you and advise you all to put here all the relevant questions so that you could have the better knowledge of, of this process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now could I please request our director, sir, Dr. Ajay Kumar, a versatile man with the sharp administrative skills, to come up on the stage for the formal opening of the session. Sir, please. On the topic, participation of youth in electoral system. Under the Electoral Literacy Club, uh, initiative taken up by Priyanka Singh, Nodal Officer of Technia Institute of Advanced Studies. Sir, Technia Institute of Advanced Studies is a flagship of Technia Group of Institution, as one of the premier institutions of a of a IP university and it's a grade institute as per NAC accreditation process. It is affiliated with IP university approved by EICT and recognized under section 2F of university grant commission 1956. The institute con conducts master of business administration program BBA, bachelor of arts, uh, master of uh, uh, master of computer applications earlier, bachelor of computer applications program. The institute of, is I certified for standardization of 9001, 2015, 14001, 2015, and 21001, 2018, 251001, and 2018 certified institute, and coming under top 50 B school in North Zone by Week Hansa Research Survey. Top 50 private institutes in India by Times BB Education Ranking Survey. The Indian Institute has established itself Innovation Council under the norms of Ministry of HRD, Innovation Cell, Government of India. In, on 11th, 9, 19, 2019, to promote innovation and startups, and also establish entrepreneurship development cell. The institute provides uh, value-added programs for career counseling, sessions, capability enhancements, programs on technical and soft skills expertise for development of young professionals. The institute has also set up the TIES and PTA local chapter to complete the MOOCs course with e-certification for, for making the students employable. The institute has ultra-modern infrastructure for impart the value-based education system, conducts training and research in consultancy, uh, which has been envisaged by the new education policy, national and international conference, seminars, faculty exchange programs, technical cultural fests since 1998. The institute is located in the prime location of state of heart facilities, eradicating the facilities, dedicated staff and ambience to full admirable ac for academic pursuits. At the onset, I welcome the guest of the talk show, Dr. Ranbir Singh, IAS Officer, Chief Electoral Officer, Delhi. Dr. Singh is a senior IAS officer and presently posted as Chief Electoral Officer, Delhi. He has worked at many administrative posts at many places. He has also served as counselors in Embassy of India, Washington, D.C., USA, Resident Commissioner of Mizoram and Commissioner of East Delhi Municipal Corporation. The Lok Sabha election 2019 and Delhi Legislative Assembly 2000 election 2020 was conducted in the entity of Delhi under his stewardship. Ms. R. Menka, IES DEO, uh, uh, District Magistrate, North uh, District, Delhi. She is presently District Magistrate, DEO of North Delhi District. She is uh, basically from Tamil Nadu. She has worked at different administrative posts in Goa, Andaman and Nicobar and Delhi. And Sir, Sri J. L. Gupta, I, it's ITS, Telecom Services. Uh, nodal officer of ELC activities in India. You have seen the word over here mentioned sweep, systemic voters education electoral participation. This is a greater participation for a stronger democracy. Systematic uh, voters education and electoral platform participation program better known as sweep uh, is the flagship program of election commission of India. For the, for, for the voters' education, spreading voter awareness and promoting voter literacy in India. Since 2009, we have been working uh, towards preparing India electoral and equip them with the basic knowledge related to the electoral process. And SWEEP is a primary goal is to build a truly participating democracy in, democracy in India by encouraging all eligible citizens to vote and make informed decisions during the elections. The program is based on multiple general as well as targeted interventions which helps designing according to the socio-economic, cultural, demographic profile of the state as well as the history of electoral participation in previous rounds of elections and learning thereof. Now the Electoral Literacy Club, 
for which you are the volunteers and participants in reference to the mail we have received on 26th of October 2021 from the Director of Student Welfare, Guru Gobind Singh in the Prastha University on the day itself, the Technia Institute of Advanced, Ed, uh, uh, Institute of Advanced Studies has established this uh, cell in the institute and it was informed that the Electoral Literacy Club in each institute should be there to establish, to sensitize the students about the electoral rights, electoral process for registration and voting through the interesting activities, games, according to in, uh, in charge student welfare, uh, put forward this notion and we have accepted it and we have uh, made the ELC uh, integral part of our extension activities in the institute. This is the first target uh, nodal officer of TIAS. We have to execute that they should be able to get their first that they should be able to participate in electoral process. Electoral literacy club especially for the students college going across India and uh, objective is to educate the targeted population about the voter registration, about the EVM, about the VVPAT and uh, about the helping the target audience about the value of their vote and exercise their right uh, of integrating the electoral process during to developing cultural and electoral participation and maximize the informed and ethical voting and follow the principle of every vote counts and no voter to be left behind. This is the motto of ELC. Every vote counts. Each and every vote of yours accountable count for uh, you are you have to do a duty towards the nation by exercising your franchise and no voter to be left behind. This is the objective with the ELC that. Each and every student who have not been able to uh, get their electoral card, please help yourself, help us. We will help you to get your electoral cards. So there are various activities under ELC. Ballot Distro, Young Voters Festival for UA, Maddan Mahotsav, Special Drives, Debates on uh, Competition, National Voter Day Celebrations, Motivators Invite. Today we are having a great motivation day because this telecast would be there for chief election commission office will be there they will be seeing this uh, how we are going to present it and your um, uh, commitment your objective will definitely going to be reverberated over there regular activities and it, there has to be a elc wall magazine where the regular uh, information will be there for your browsing uh, with this i feel that uh, nodal officer was doing tremendous work uh, nodal officer has got a Target, promoting and supervising electoral enrollment, supervising the electoral and formation of executive committee for ELC, coordinating with the district election officer for the exchange of resources information, and attempt generating new resources forwarded the same to the district election, and guiding the supervising development and calendar for activities for the executive council nodal officer will be the free to exchange executive me committee member in operations of ELC. So nodal officer is free to exchange the executive committee member in the operation of ELC. Ms. Priyanka Singh, uh, uh, with this, I feel that uh, we have got uh, uh, experts with us. Uh, people can be able to uh, make up their questions in mind ready that what I'm going to ask over there for this talk show on any, anything on that issue. Uh, with this, I take uh, uh, signing off from here. May God bless you all, and uh, you are going to bring uh, Laurel to the country. Thank you. God bless you all. Please request our chief guest, Dr. Ranbir Singh, to please present the certificate of achievement to Ms. Priyanka Singh, Assistant Professor BAJMC. Thank you, Priyanka Ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Ajay Kumar, Director. Thank you so much, sir. It is my privilege to have such distinguished chief guest, Dr. Ranbir Singh, IAS Chief Electoral Officer, Delhi, among us. I may be permitted to give a brief introduction about his accomplishments, attainments, and his chosen field. Dr. Ranbir Singh is a senior IAS officer and presently posted, posted as Chief Electoral Officer, Delhi. He has worked at many administrative posts at many places. He also served as a counselor in Embassy of India, Washington DC and the USA, Resident Commissioner of Mizoram and Commissioner of East Delhi Municipal Corporation. The Lok Sabha election 2019 and Delhi Legislative Assembly to election 2020 were conducted in the NCT of Delhi under his stewardship. So, could I request you to share your words of wisdom with all of us? Uh, it seems to be a very promising institute, a very successful institute. And uh, 
the students uh, really seem to be extremely focused, extremely disciplined. Is it so? Okay. And uh, extremely geared towards their futures. So that's very good. I'm told that there is also a very good placement rate and very good atmosphere for startup uh, formation. So it's a great institute. I congratulate all of you for being students of this institute. I'm also very happy to share with you that uh, this is the first uh, program of this kind that uh, we are organizing. So, इस तरह के प्रोग्राम्स आगे भी हम दूसरे इंस्टिट्यूट्स में करेंगे क्योंकि ये पहला है अपनी नौयत का तो इसलिए इसमें मुझे भी बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिलेगा ताकि हम उसको रेप्लिकेट कर सकें इन अवर फ्यूचर प्रोग्राम्स और मैं दरख्वास्त करूंगा जेएल गुप्ता साहब से कि इस तरह का प्रोग्राम हर महीने कम से कम एक प्रोग्राम ऑर्गेनाइज करना चाहिए ताकि हम यंगस्टर्स के साथ मुखातिब हो सकें और उनको अपनी बात बता सकें और उससे भी ज़्यादा हम यंगस्टर्स से ये सीख सकें कि यूथ पार्टिसिपेशन कम क्यों है क्योंकि जब तक हम नहीं समझेंगे तब तक हम वो कहते हैं ना कि जब तक हम बीमारी को डायग्नोज नहीं करेंगे तब तक उसका इलाज भी नहीं हो सकता है और मेडिकल साइंस बिकॉज आए I am a medical student. I have been a medical student. So, uh, the first lesson that a medical student is taught in the medical college when uh, one starts going for the clinical classes is that as far as possible, diagnosis must precede treatment. As far as possible, diagnosis must precede treatment. So, that means we must first identify the cause and once we identify the cause it may be possible to address it so this is by way of introduction so main ye janna chahta hu aap logon se ki uh, kisne election commission ka naam nahi suna hua hai kindly raise the hand election commission of india ka naam jisne nahi suna hai sabne suna hua hai so ye this is very encouraging ओके okay. अब मुझे ये बताएं कि इलेक्शन कमीशन की स्थापना कब हुई थी बताइए 25 जैन 1950 वेरी गुड सो द इलेक्शन कमीशन वाज कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड और फाउंडेड ऑन 25 ऑफ जनवरी 1950 दैट मींस ए डे बिफोर इंडिया बिकेम ए रिपब्लिक एंड बिकॉज that is the day of the, the foundation day for the commission in 2011 this this day was dedicated to the voters of india and that is why 25th january is known as the national voters day so this also everybody knows huh? 25th january is the national voters day and all of you and in fact, everyone, I'm told that there are more than 2,000 students, about 2,200 students in this institution. Only 10% of those are present in this hall today. But I'm addressing those 90% also who are left out. So everyone should be a part of the National Voters Day on every 25th of January. So that uh, is very important. If uh, if we are concerned, and which seems to be the case, about uh, the participation of youth in the democratic process, in the electoral process, then the least that we can do is to be a part of the National Voters Day celebrations. The other important thing is that one should, uh, one should know a little bit about the Election Commission of India and what it does. And the Electoral Literacy Club here is a good forum to uh, impart that knowledge amongst all the students. So we should know what are the functions of the Election Commission and how it performs those functions. But briefly I will tell you 
that election commission of india conducts the election for the president of india for the vice president of india for the lok sabha and rajya sabha and for vidhan sabhas and vidhan parishads so these are the elections that the election commission of india conducts for conducting the local body elections like municipal corporations and municipal committees and uh, village panchayats etc there is a separate commission which is constituted in every state and union territory for conducting those elections election commission of india has nothing to do with the elections to the local bodies so this is very important to understand the second important aspect that one should know about the election commission is that uh, it basically performs two functions number one making the voter list so preparation revision and management of the voter list is an important function of the election commission of india and second is it conducts these six elections that i talked about so these two functions primarily making the voter list and conducting the election now it was told before me that uh, right to vote is a constitutional right it's the constitution that gives this right to everyone who is more than 18 years of age and you also know that the age used to be 21 years till 1989 when it was reduced to 18 years from 21 years to 18 years but it is important to also know that you can still not vote in the election if unless your name is included in the voter list and the voter list which the election commission of india through its electoral machinery of which i am a part as the head of the electoral machinery at the state level and for example menka is a part as the head of the electoral machinery at the district level and similarly there is an electoral machinery at the constituency level and there is also a foot soldier on the ground who is called the block uh, booth level officer blo so this huge electoral machinery its job is to prepare the voter list because if a citizen's name who is more than 18 years of age is otherwise eligible under the terms of the constitution if his name is not included in the voter list he or she cannot vote so it is very very important to understand this you may be a more than 18 years of age you may have lot of uh, uh, aspiration to vote a lot of determination to vote but if you have not got your name added in the electoral roll that means in the voter list you cannot be you will not be allowed to vote at the time of election so remember this and get your name added in the electoral roll this we call enrollment enrollment as a voter so everybody should enroll as a voter and uh, for that what is to be done actually uh, it is the elc in your institution that should enable it that should disseminate this information should conduct sessions for enrollment but here i will tell you very briefly that the easiest way to become a voter is to download the mobile app of the election commission which is called the voter helpline app or vha you download it on your mobile phone and fill up your form 6 on it through that app you can fill up the form 6 and along with it you have to upload three things your photograph your age proof and your residence proof because you can become a voter of only that part where your residence is so these three documents you upload along with filling up of the form 6 and then within 2 uh, to 3 weeks you will receive your voter id card at your place of residence by post by speed post so th- it is that easy you download your you, you download the mobile app 
you fill up the form, upload the documents, and then relax. Within two, three weeks, or max within a month, you will receive the voter ID card. So I was actually surprised that in uh, an institution which is uh, uh, such a center of excellence and where everybody is so highly motivated, so many people, even in this small gathering of about 200 students, so many students are not registered as voters. This is not a matter of which I am greatly proud. And so therefore, there is a lot of work to be done in this regard. There are many other things that one should know as a student, if one is uh, concerned about our democracy. Those also uh, you will get to know through the ELC. So become an active member of the ELC. Every student, all these more than 2,000 students, should become active members of the Electoral Literacy Club of your institution. And when you become active member, means that you participate in its activities. I will request uh, Priyanka ji to organize monthly activities. Every month at least one activity should be organized, one session should be organized, and all the students should be involved in that activity. It could be uh, a quiz, it could be some other competition, it could be a talk, it could be a hands-on activity. For example, some game can be played or, or uh, downloading of the mobile app, etc. It can be a program where information is given about the election commission and its activities. What, for example, what are the technology platforms that the Election Commission of India has developed for enabling the citizens to participate in the democratic process? So, I told you about VHA, there is also a PWD app for those who are having physical disability. Similarly, there is an app which is called C-Vigil, which, uh, uh, which empowers a citizen to report any malpractices during an election. If uh, any citizen comes across or experiences any malpractice by candidates or political parties during the election campaign, then the citizen can in real time report that matter through a video. So uh, then within 100 minutes of your reporting, action is completed on that complaint. So that is called CVG Lab. So similarly, there are many other technology platforms. Also, there is a portal called NVSP, National Voter Service Portal, nvsp.in, on which you can do all those things which you can do on Voter Helpline app, mobile app, you know, the mobile app that I talked about. So one should know about NVSP portal. There is also a grievance portal. There is a helpline, which is a four-digit helpline, 1950. The student here already mentioned. So students should know about all these things. Students should know about the model code of conduct. What is model code of conduct? Students should know about what are the political parties in our country? For example, what is a national party? Which are the national parties in India? How many of them are there? See, there are two kinds of parties. One category is called recognized parties, which are recognized by the election commission because they have, they have got substantial number of votes during an election in the past. So therefore, they are recognized. And then there are other parties which are not recognized, but these are also registered political parties. They also contest elections. They also have all the rights and obligations under the statute. But 
they are not recognized. And amongst the recognized parties, we have national parties, which are eight in number, and we have state parties, which is a list specific to that state. For example, in Delhi, there is only one state party, which is the Amadim party, which is recognized. And national parties are, I think, eight. So one should know something about the political parties. One should know about the uh, affidavit which a candidate has to file in order to contest an election. So what is affidavit? Affidavit in Form 26. What information is given? Broadly, a candidate has to furnish three types of information. Number one, educational qualifications. Every candidate must furnish that information because the voters should know how well qualified a candidate is. Secondly, one should f uh, file the financial information, income and liabilities, etc. And third type of information which is required from the candidate is the criminal antecedents, whether his track record is uh, good or whether he has a lot of criminal cases against him. So all that, that information is provided through the affidavit. So the student should know as uh, uh, vigilant citizens. And they should access that information. And it is easy to access this information on the voter helpline app or on the Election Commission of India's website or on CEO Delhi's website. CEO Delhi also has a website, codelhi.gov.in, where you can get the information. You should also know as to how it is that one can check whether the name is there in the voter list or not. You can check on the mobile app, you can check on nvsp.in, you can also check by sending an SMS. So, at least some basic information about the electoral system, about uh, the various uh, facets in uh, uh, in your in you know for for the purpose of performing your duty and exercising your rights as a voter, you can uh, uh, get to know those things through the websites and mobile apps, etc. But and through the ELC here. But it is very important that all the students understand these little things. Now, I want to uh, give a suggestion that uh, maybe, because Technia, as I told, is the first institution where I am giving this kind of a talk, maybe uh, we can have uh, a sort of agreement or a, an MOU with the, uh, with the management of uh, this institute and lay down what are the various uh, expectations from the institute and what are the what is the support that we will provide and what are the outcome uh, parameters which we expect the institution to achieve so uh, we can have this kind of uh, an mou between uh, my office and the and the institute so that this becomes a good example which then uh, we can replic replicate in other institutions. What is my objective? My objective is that people in the young age group, they must participate in the electoral process. Today they are participating only on the margins. They are not participating to the extent uh, their numbers exist. For example, in the electoral role of Delhi, I find that uh, in this age group of say 18 years to 25 years, when they are in uh, colleges, in this age group, uh, the voter registration participation is hardly 20 to 30 percent. In some constituencies, it is even less. 
so that means 70 80 percent of the youth do not register themselves as voters and even those who register themselves as voter they don't go out and vote on the election day so uh, the participation in the voting is also low is very very low abysmally low because if only 20 percent or 30 percent are enrolling as voters and from amongst them if only 40 50 percent or even less are voting then that means the youth is not really voting i don't know what is the reason for this apathy i don't know why the uh, young boys and girls do not uh, uh, want to participate i do not know i have come here to know from you why is it that you are not interested so this apathy youth apathy or urban apathy or whatever that we must uh, deal with we must deal with so that everybody participates if see uh, the youth should be the most interested segment in the in the electoral process because through electoral process our democratic system functions through this process we decide who will be forming the government which party which candidate will win etc and that government then functions for five years it makes laws it makes policies it runs the administration and all these things affect you they affect you more than they affect the older people they affect you more because you have a long life ahead you have to take many decisions as you go you have to choose many directions so you should be concerned as to what kind of candidate should be voted what kind of government should be voted in etc so it is uh, baffling actually it is puzzling to me that why the youth should not be interested youth should be interested more than anybody else but we will try and smoothen this process we will try and encourage this process and let us hope that we uh, through uh, such sessions and through the instrument of elc we are able to address this problem of under participation by the youth so now i uh, want to take a commitment from all of you and also from those who are not present here through the elc that we will from now on take interest in the electoral process and participate in the electoral process we will become voters and we will also spread this message it is also important to spread this message one more thing i want to tell you that at your home you will have several people who are voters whose names are there in the voter list now some of the names may be of people who are no more we lost them maybe recently or maybe in the distant past but their names are still in the voter list and this may be in your families also so you will be doing a great favor to me and to the election commission of india if you if you find out whether there are any names from your families of people who are no more and the names are in the voter list get those names removed and getting those names removed is also very easy again through the voter helpline app you can form you can fill up form 7 and then the ero will remove the names because if those names are there if they continue to be there then i have an inflated list people who 
whose names are there in the voter list, but they cannot come and vote. So what happens? During election, our voter turnout looks, seems to be far lower than it should be, than it actually is. So then people will say that, see, Delhi, nobody takes interest in voting, only 60% voter turnout, right? So if we remove those names of uh, people who are no more there, it will help increase our turnout. So thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. I once again <laughs> thank the uh, director and uh, the dean and everybody else for this opportunity. I think we can do it. Let us make a beginning. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we rarely get this kind of opportunity to listen to the words of personality like Ms. R. Menika, ISDO, DM, North District. Ms. R. Menika is presently District Magistrate and the EO of North District. She is basically from Tamil Nadu. She has worked at different administrative posts in Goa, Andamar, Nicobar and Delhi. So let us have the privilege of listening to her. Ma'am, please. First of all, we are very happy uh, to be part of uh, today's a sweep program here at Technia Institute and especially as a DEO who is tasked with the responsibility of increasing the voting percentage, I am really happy to be part of uh, this talk show today. There cannot be a better audience than you for this topic. When I say this, I see some of you turning out to be happy, but when I tell you the reason, probably you will not. So, let us start it this way. Why is it that we are having this sweep activity? Any of you? There should have been one single reason why the Honorable Election Commission of India has laid so much of stress on the sweep activity. One reason? Any of you please try? Let's all be together to spread awareness. Why is that awareness needed? People don't know the political process. There is one reason why all the sweep activity is happening in this entire country. To make people participate in the democratic process of election. It is the single agenda for which this entire sweep process is organized. So it has two aspects. The first aspect is to ensure that every eligible citizen is made part of the electoral roll. Part two, all those who are there in the electoral roll participate on the day of polls and cast their vote. These are the two things. Now I'll come to why I'm happy to address this audience. The reason why a CEO sir also mentioned in his talk that when the entire country has an voting percentage of 70 above, in places like Goa where I served before this, the voting percentage is around 80 to 85 percent. In Delhi, the voting percentage is around 60 to 62 percent. Are you still happy that you are the best audience for this topic? Are you happy that you are, you are still happy to be part of this audience? No, you shouldn't be. Why? Because it is the urban apathy which has been considered to be the most important reason for a low percentage of voting in urban places like Delhi, which we unfortunately are part of now. Are you still happy? So, we understand that we are not happy about this. Let me break it up this way to you. As uh, director also discussed, that we should have a camp here to see that large section of the audience here, and of course the audience which will be outside also, who are yet to be registered as voters, have to be facilitated to become voters. We would be very happy to organize one such camp in this institute very soon. So we are such tech-savvy individuals who are sitting in this audience 
who I don't think will look forward to a camp, who will be self-reliant enough to open your smartphones, download the voter helpline app, fill in the details, which basically has three details, your photograph, your age proof, and your address proof. We just need these three things for being registered as an voter. So, nevertheless, we will definitely organize a camp in this um, institute. But before that, I would request each one of you, just as you would download any app and go through it, navigate it, please do so for the voter helpline app also. And if you succeed registering yourself, it will be a good thing. So this um, entire process is becoming difficult because we are in the continuous process of cleansing the electoral roll. As Sir rightly mentioned, there are people who have expired, who have shifted, who have migrated. Their names necessarily should be removed from the electoral roll of that particular part and added in the place where they will reside presently. So this brings in an additional responsibility to all members of the ELC, for which you all are part of. One, first you register yourself as an voter, and two, please look around your home, your society, your friends, and see who all are yet to be registered. So once you register, you have a responsibility to explain to others as to how they can get themselves added into the electoral roll. And in case there is any correction to be made, deletion to be made, sh migration, shifting to be effected, all this can be done with the help of the app. Of course, you can always contact the uh, booth level officer who will be in charge of your part. So, uh, just to sum up what we have discussed all through the uh, session, as members of the Electoral Literacy Club, one, we get educated ourselves, two, we educate the people around us. So we request that each one of you should actively participate in all the activities of the ELC, which uh, Director has now decided it is going to be a monthly program. So every month there will be a program and we will request each one of you to actively participate in the ELC activities. Two, please become ambassadors of the Honorable Election Commission of India and spread awareness amongst your society. So as urban youth, let us all come together to break this notion of urban apathy which is holding back the voting percentage in the urban areas. So next time when we meet again and when we ask how many of you are registered voters here, we would expect that this entire hall rises up and say you are the proud voter of this democracy. Thank you.